Okay, so now we're ready to assemble everything to the frame. To do that, we first need to make sure we're locating the frame in the right orientation. I think the easiest way to do that is to check which ones have the six nuts. So there's this face here and this face here. And so from that, we know that the vertical Z axis rides up and down here. And then from there, we know that uh, each side of, well, we know that this is the front face or this is the front face. To check that, we know that this one is completely empty. There's no nuts in here. That's the front. There's nuts along here for holding the power supply and SSR and things like that. So that's now the back. This is the left. Along the left side, we have the XY idlers. So that's up on here. And opposite those, we have the, uh, the stepper motors. So now we've selected our two faces for stepper motors. We can rotate this around and start an assembly of that. So we'll start on this one here. And we need, obviously, one motor assembly. It will probably be easiest to assemble this down, because if you try and assemble it into like this, you're just going to have problems where you're losing your nuts. So we'll lie it down, and now we can more easily locate these. Uh, we need the an M3 post fit T-slot nut, and that just goes in there like that. From there, we'll start by adding this. So obviously you've got this screw that's already part, and this doesn't come out, so. That's always a nice way to start. Easily just locate that on the beam. That should screw in without a problem. If you want to lose uh, Loctite here, like we did for the frame, you can do. But personally, I'd like to keep these bits easily replaceable. And the Loctite just makes them a bit tight to be easy to get out of. So the frame, permanent. These, not so much. If you do get problems with them coming out, then by all means, add some Loctite. That's completely up to you. So we've done two M5s here, this M3 at the top, and then we come around to the inside face. Oh golly, all over. And then there's this screw around here, which we have one slot nut for, and that slot's in there. Slots, get it, slot nut, you know, whatever. And that's just... That comes in here, and we'll position that in a bit. Oh, we don't do it like that, do we? Next, we're going to get this one of the uh, shafts. In this case, I'm using Igus. I guess aluminium anodized, hard anodized. I don't know what their coating is specifically called, but we stick the bearing on there. And then we want the opposite end clamp. So there's, it's gonna be one of the larger ones. There's a small one, but that goes above this. The, so now we need the clamp for the other end. It's gonna be one of these two. You can see they're a mirror image. You want the one that, when attached to this top face, the screw, which is the outside. So when it's all assembled, you can still tighten that screw if you need to. In this case, it's this one. So we don't need those screws immediately. We'll press this into here. Oh, make sure you loosen the M3 screw first, otherwise it's going to be quite difficult. So now we have now we have the bearing on the shaft and one of the end clamps, and then this should just fit in here like so. And there you go, that's rigidly held. The screws are not hugely important, but they do help in the long term, in the long term, long run, you know. So let's just flip this over. And obviously here we've got some slot nuts and we slide those up and they go and hold that bracket tightly. Easy peasy.
So those, those are sort of approximately placed, but they're not in the right place. So this is where we use the, uh, the magic tool, which is not very magic. And it just, it hooks on the side here, and then we move this bar up until it meets here. And then we can slide it along and do both ends, and that will make sure that they're both at the right height, and then everything works nicely. You might need to walk it up gently. So again, that's one side up, and but if we come down here, then you can see a gap starts to form at the top. So we just pull that up, and that's a nice uniform fit. And now we can tighten those screws down, and everything will hold wonderfully in place. At this point, you can also tighten these just to make sure your clamp's not going to let go of the shaft anytime soon. It probably won't. So that's now held in that end, and we can tighten the same this end if needs be. You'll probably find the plastic holds the bars reasonably tight, but you want to make sure it's also rigid, so as you apply force to them, they don't start to move at all. And that's what these clamps are going to provide. And then obviously double check with the guide piece that I've now lost, that it's still just how we want it. Yep, that seems perfect, excellent. So this, the other side is basically exactly the same as that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So we want to align this approximately with the other side, a little one the other side. But we can again use this little wonderful little very easy to use tool and just eyeball it for now. And when we get the shaft in, that'll when that'll be when it all fixes itself. So this one works just the same as the other side. A couple of M5 watt sits, and we're good to go. Lock tight if you want, not required. Now this stepper motor, you can position however you like for now. When it comes to putting the belt in, that's when you can make your fine adjustments to make sure it fits. The position is not gonna determine much. So as long as the belt fits through the, you know, the part on the X axis, the gantry, then uh, I think we'll be fine there. I know we will be fine there. So don't worry too much about it. It's the shaft that matters the most. Uh, and then as before, we need the clamp. Don't need a screw in it. These are quite tight, so have to give it a bit of welly to get it in, but obviously tighter the better, because the last thing you want is it to come out. You want this to come through almost exactly flush with the other side, so to the point where that's basically flat with there, otherwise it, well, the frame is 400 mil and these are 400 mil. If you need to file them a little bit off the end, then you can do but hopefully that won't be necessary. And again, oh, don't forget the bearing. Pop that end in that one. Mm -hmm. That doesn't fit. It might actually be better, rather than doing it the way I've done it here, if you fit these two clamps Rather than fitting this one to the frame, 
fit both clamps to the shaft and then the shaft to the frame. You can probably do that both sides as well. That'll give a probably slightly easier assembly process. Again, making sure it's flush because otherwise it will not fit. If you do need to file your shaft down, you know, this one, then do so gently. You can take off a, a few mil before it's going to be a problem though. And again, flipping over to fix this smaller bracket on this side. And it fits the same as the other one. So nice and easy. Oh, make sure you get it up the right way. So this at the moment is the wrong way because this is the outside of the frame. And you want to make sure that this screw head is on the outside of the frame. By having it on the outside of the frame, you can adjust it and take it out at any time. So there you have it. That's the Y-axis assembly. Coming up next will be either the X-axis, X-axis, either the gantry assembly, or maybe we'll do the Z-axis. To be honest, they can go on in pretty much any order. So whatever you feel like doing, you can do. See you next time.